Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. Last time, we affected the outcome of history. We defeated Lavos and changed the future. This time, we still have a lot to see. And now, we're going back in time to clean up two periods. Ew. The only major thing that we could have done but didn't do in the original release of Chrono Trigger is going back to the Black Omen in 600 AD as well as 12,000 BC and running through it two more times. Worth knowing, the panels and, uh, more importantly, their speed capsules disappear forever, so they cannot be obtained in every time period. Some things are non-repeatable. Mutant bosses and all treasure chests are also already done no matter what time period. This is all starting to sound pretty sucky until you reach the infinite strength capsule enemies once again. This is repeatable if you didn't do it before. As stated prior, any attack stat that I care about, I'm not too worried about not hitting Star Star on its own in time, so I limited myself to 10. Limited myself to 11. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'll take it. All these are going on Glenn as he has the lowest strength stat out of everyone that I at least care about. Well, maybe a few could go on Luca now that I think about it since she has the Wonder Shot and all, and that is half affected by her attack. Wow. 16. Actually, 16. From old enough to drive to old enough to drink. Got another strength capsule off of the second one. That's going straight onto Glenn. In this room, on this pedestal. Right at the very beginning, walk around, and eventually, yes! Two new enemies that we have not seen before! Those things on the end look like somebody's dog who stuck its head out the window to let its gums flap in the wind for too long! That's a gosh! Which is also the sound that it's probably making. In the original translation, these are known as aliens, which I've always thought was really weird, and they've always had probably the creepiest appearance. And then these are narbles, or if you want to call them by their full name, narble garbles. <laughs> Really, they have magic capsules on them. There's not very many of these. They're some of the most uncommon enemies. You saw me miss them. So I'll take those two right away. Gosh, this... For how scary the things on the ends look, the things in the middle look so wacky and zany with other animating. Uh, these guys have magic rings, so not really too terrible there. If I'm not mistaken, it's attacking them. God, their mouths are so dirty. Yeah, counters physical attacks. With insta-kill! Isn't that nice? So, they have an instant death counter, the only one of their kind in the entire game. Uh, Finny and water, please. And they don't attack unless attacked first, so it's a matter of making sure that your attacks count and... Well, making sure those attacks count. Okay, no, it's really that they counter with instant death to physical attacks and they're susceptible to magic. If we go for magic... Then the aliens, as they like to call themselves, don't counter, but the narbles do, with an MP buster. That's also perfect. You see how it's a frustrating combination of enemies? So I'm thinking probably Chrono. You do that. It's kind of amusing to me the fact that I, to demonstrate things frequently, do things completely the wrong way the very first time just to show you what it's like. Uh, Luminaire. Things look like they're straight out of a different art style. They don't resemble anything else at all, and maybe that's why they went with the name Aliens for them. Down they go. 3,000 experience, barrier sphere, and a shield sphere. Up in this pedestal, walk around. And there's two more. There are only four gages in the entire game. They don't come back after you leave the room. They don't even come back in other time periods. Thankfully, Charming counts as a magical attack, because there's magic in it, yes. And uh, unlike those blubber nuggets upstairs, they don't counterattack you every time you charm a capsule off of them. Four magic capsules. Two of them on Luca. I almost called her Reese. <laughs> Come to think of it, it's funnier that I haven't done that sooner. I'm proud of myself for that one. Sorry, Glenn. I could see those two being the last two enemies in your bestiary, similar to the fallen soul that we got all that time ago during Glenn's quest. Then frog. Zeal, you're less special than a treasure chest, and I can confidently say that to you now that I know we can beat you. She comes back and can be fought and charmed all over again as though none of it happened. Yeah, you should be laughing at yourself. 
Wow, she actually stops laughing if you throw her up into the air. Didn't see that one coming. More zeal, more mega elixirs, more prismatic dresses, more prismatic helms. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, only on Nintendo Switch. That was a ripoff. Magus, there is turning back now. We've been through this. I am Blue Gato. You won't get silver points. If you beat at me, you'll learn EXP. Run number three, I got carried away and gave myself 21 strength capsules, which I kind of don't think well, I, 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 I'm doing this so much where I keep second guessing myself. I'm going to have two of them. Robo's at 93, so that doesn't matter either. So probably just going to give Luke a 40 then because her wonder shot actually does make her attack stat matter a little. And of course, I charmed everything up Queen Zeal a third time so we could have six prismatic helms in total and a prismatic dress on every female party member. That's another reason why I didn't think that the prismatic dress from Melkier was that worth it, because there's exactly three prismatic dresses otherwise. And that, aside from the one speed capsule and one white plate I missed, is every single capsule and special equipment piece obtainable in a single playthrough of Chrono Trigger. Lavos Hole! Back to the title screen. Since we're done with the base playthrough, how about we get into some actually new information? First off, there is an extra section. After beating Lavos, oh, I guess I gotta select a save file for this because it's specific to each one. First is the theater, allowing you to watch the opening cutscene you can see from just waiting on the title screen anyway, so this takes more time than that, but no, it is every single anime cutscene there is in the entire game. An art gallery! in all of its 256 by 190 resolution glory. <laughs> Why anyone would want to look at this in this particular way, I don't know, but I guess it's interesting. <laughs> what I was wanting to show was that <laughs> Magus has a red cape in all of his official artwork, but he has a blue cape in the game itself. I think the blue fits him better, so chalk this up to yet another instance of liking the in-game artwork better than the official. Chrono is also left-handed most of the time, as seen in this picture, and that one as well. On the box art, however, he's right-handed. Could this mean the artwork is mirrored? Well, I'd say so. Marl's using fire instead of ice, so it's in more ways than one. This is based on a pre-release screenshot of the game that Akira Toriyama just simply interpreted and drew as he thought it would look from another perspective. At this point in development, Marl's element was going to be fire. This is one of the earliest screenshots believed to have been taken during the pitch for Chrono Trigger before it was even greenlit. And speaking of which, at the same time in development, look, it's the terrible little pants being in a prehistoric area, just as I thought. A music box. Which doesn't function after you close the lid, so what's the point? Dojo! Just merely a showcase of all the text that you have learned. Uh, if there is any tech that is yet to pop up in your list, you'll find out about it here because it won't be in the list, and it tells you which characters have a tech that you have yet to see. Well, that's a lot. I was praising them for having a lot of techs, but I didn't think there were quite this many. That's... 116 of the things. That's just damn impressive, especially with how it comes out instantly. That stuff was not easy to optimize for RAM back in the day. Got 100% though. Bestiary, oh, I can't hear the Gato song, is not totally filled in yet. I've showed every enemy that can possibly be encountered at this point in time. At the very bottom underneath Lavos Core are many new enemies that were not in the original release. Item Encyclopedia is a thing, I guess? I don't really see much need for this to exist, just tells you how to get charms from certain enemies, reminding you of them. 
I wouldn't ever reference this in game because you have to go back to the title screen for it, but I guess it's kind of helpful if maybe you don't have the internet. The mop is what it went to when I scrolled over to the items. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. That made this feature worth existing. I approve of it. Uh, the ending log is nowhere as cool as it sounds. You get a screenshot and a description. You cannot press A on these options to view the endings again, which is exactly what I would have wanted. Uh, this is the standard ending. Contents vary according to the status of the epic. Remove the text. Treasure Atlas is what I consider a lot more helpful than the item list. It'll show you where there are items hidden throughout the world in case there are any that have not been collected and you have this cursor to move around the screen. Uh, how about, yeah, right here it'll say that this guy will give you a potion. This must have taken so much time and work to do for not a whole lot in return and I appreciate whoever's job it was to put this whole thing together because it couldn't have been easy. I've never put together a comprehensive list of every item in a video game before, and I couldn't even imagine what it would be like. This is kind of nice as well, but it's not something I'd really reference all that much, and what's really stupid is that all of this stuff is just gone in the PC release of Chrono Trigger, even though this was used as the basis, and by extension the mobile version as well. It's a case of all this stuff was already made, and most of it's text anyway, such as the bestiary, so why remove it? Plus, you don't get to hear this beautiful song. That's all for the extra section. Now to move on to something... Uh, meteor, we'll call it. Sakaguchi mentioned in interviews that during the testing phase for Chrono Trigger, there was a common desire among testers to play the game a second time to see the different outcomes. So what did they do in response to this? Oh, I don't know. Just invented New Game Plus? Yeah! God, you guys were already the best game developers of all time. Now you're just showing off. This is the first time that it was ever done in a game, and it's where the term comes from. There are examples of second playthroughs that are a little different before this, even as far back as Super Mario Brothers, where the Koopas turn into Buzzy Beetles. But this is seriously where the term, and how we know it today, originated from. They invented it! In case you're wondering, because it was the term's first appearance, in Japan it's known as New Game with Strength. Kinda like that name. The trigger to unlock New Game Plus is going the extra mile and taking out Lavos after beating the Black Omen. No other method of challenging Lavos unlocks it, so it must be played all the way to the end. Uh, Mom? Since when is there a dimensional vortex in our backyard? That can't be good for the trees back there. Uh, Mom, I thought you said you were gonna take it out with the garbage last week. Oh no, everything's getting dark! Seeing as this is the first of its kind, I thought to kind of honor the game that invented this much beloved feature that we kind of take for granted nowadays, we would do things differently. Instead of giving you a video of all the miscellaneous side topics that I just couldn't fit into the main series, we're doing a second abridged playthrough where I am cutting around to just the new information, all the things that I couldn't talk about before, and anything that you guys told me about that I was previously not aware of because there was a lot more than I expected. So, let's go around again. Seeing as it's the first New Game Plus of all time, it's a tiny bit more flawed than your average New Game Plus, so this comes with a few warning labels. If I may show this, I still have... Well, okay, I don't have it equipped right now, but I do still have all of my equipment. Equipment is thankfully restored to defaults, so that any equipment that was equipped on party members we don't have yet is just returned right to you and you can use them all from the start. Since you have all your equipment, you have all your items too, but you're noticing that in the lower right corner of that top screen, I only got 400G. Money resets, unfortunately, which is considered a very standard feature of New Game Plus by present day. The solution to this is to go to Medina Village after clearing Magus's quest so that that shop is the cheapest, convert all of your items into money, and then just turn around and sell them again. Money is not that big a deal, so I'm not really that concerned about it, but as you can see, I have 99 of practically every material and even bought some extra equipment I didn't need. Going into things that we didn't see back on our first day, walking out onto this pier leads to a fairy office. 
mysterious whirlpool sometimes appears near here. What do you suppose could cause such a thing? Uh, a giant mutating monster living in a cave. Fine, don't believe me. If only my dear Fritz would return. I'd ask nothing for nothing more. He left on a journey, and he's not returned yet. Fritz is the guy who was up for execution in the castle that we freed. The fair to pour is 10G. Will you be going? This is a pointless, frivolous feature for people who like taking a longer amount of time than just walking there yourselves because you have to walk out onto the pier, then you have to watch this cutscene after talking to the guy, and this cutscene is not short. It would actually be shorter to just walk to Pore on your own, but it's a nice thing, I guess. I just kind of was trying to save time back in the first day, but I thought I would show that it's here all the same. Here's the uh, Porarian Fair Office. That's the term I'm going with. I doubt any canon term exists, so you can't tell me I'm wrong. I take the fairy every chance I get! She just raises up her arms and shouts it. I want to ride the fairy. I went to the Porarian Market. Said I was sticking with it. And the 99 potions that I bought, those can go for, what am I doing? Just hit down once. I oh, you can't. Well, speaking of things you take for granted nowadays, that's not as much cash as I thought it would be. But okay, I guess. I bought two extra Zonmatos from the uh, shop in Medina Village, so I'll go ahead and get rid of those. I like having one of every equipment piece if I can, so I'm going to be holding on to the rest. Held on to high potion shelters, high ethers, elixirs, turbo ethers, mega elixirs, panacea, Athenian water, and ambrosia. Oh, and lapis and barrier sphere and shield sphere. I don't know why I thought it was over. That's sort of what the down arrow indicates. Held on to all those because I'm sure I'll use them at at least some point. Something that I've always wanted to talk about, but just never really found the words to do it in any particular moment. Chrono's walk cycle from the side is really stupid. Just look at how he's moving his arms. Imagine walking like that in real life. You'd look like an ass. Just, he's raising his arms up way higher than they need to go, and he doesn't even look like he's walking that in any other of his sprites or when he's walking um, north or south. It's only from the side. Next is Lean Square. You can try until you're blue in the face, you're not gonna beat me. <laughs> Let's prove a theory. I'm gonna do everything for Marl exactly as I did it before, except I am not going to talk to the girl and just miraculously know that her cat is missing without saying a word to her and see if that affects the trial. Huh. <sighs> You brought back my kitty, thank you! Chrono, you're so sweet. Upon reaching this scene, there's a little itty bitty sparkle off to the right. Sucks. This is the final method of challenging Lavos. <laughs> now it's truly possible to challenge Lavos any time that you want. And due to the timing, there are also new outcomes that were not possible in the original playthrough. It is the most difficult method of challenging Lavos, and if this method is chosen, you get the special developer's ending. The only other way to get this is to beat Lavos in the Ocean Palace when he's at his peak and has three times as much health and hits for a lot more damage. It's by far the most difficult ending to get and might as well be exclusive to New Game Plus. Be warned if you do this, there is no way out. You have to see this through to the end and you're all by yourself. The only easier way is to check the telepod before talking to Luca. This will enable Chrono and Marl to challenge Lavos. Two out of three is still a D though. Inside the developer's ending is an unused enemy called the Octo Rider. It was an enemy planned to be in Hecaran's cave and is actually there in the prototype version, but was just cut from the game and relegated only to this hidden ending. Chrono Trigger has some famous unused music that's well known among the fans of the game, but one that isn't talked about much was meant for the developer's ending. There's an unused audio track named after Yasunori Mitsuda, and it's... 
implying that he might have created that short track to play in the developer's ending when he was talked to. I think it would have given him some uniqueness. A funny detail that was found by Boundary Break is anytime that there's ever a gate on screen, the way that that outline around the gate with the white and the blue and how it looks all shiny, that is achieved by a layer of cartoony clouds that are just placed underneath the graphics and that ring is transparent. It looks super silly when you see it for the first time and it just stuck with me. Chests respawn, soda capsules. Another detail from Boundary Break's video on Chrono Trigger that I really like, you notice that this guy is across the counter, and yet I'm able to just talk to him anyway if he ever comes over to where I am. Get over here so I can prove a point, come on. Come on, uh, fine, I'll just go over here to this lady. I can talk to this lady even though she's across the counter, but I couldn't do that for any other NPC. The way that they accomplished this was not by increasing how far away you gotta be, but instead by placing objects in their laps that you are talking to so that you are close enough to talk to those. So, practically every NPC in Chrono Trigger, never seen to the player, has a cat laying in their lap or has, like, a drink between their legs. It's so clever, and they didn't have to go to the trouble of making it sprites that make sense, but they did, and that's what's so cool. Did Her Majesty somehow seem not herself? I mean, she's lost a lot of weight. Only way I'm ever gonna call you the right thing. Story important items do not return to you. For instance, we have not earned the Masamune yet, so it won't be one of Frog's equipable items. Same goes for the Hero's Badge. To the left of the first area in the Manolia Cathedral's back, uh, that's a weird way of saying that, uh, there's this skull turn off its eyeballs and go inside, and there's a scene that we never got to see on our first playthrough. Somewhere within this complex, there's a shrine to the Fiend Lord. I heard there's treasure to be found there as well. Your humans? They've hidden the queen in the back. Please rescue her. This is also where a strength capsule is that I did collect later on. And that's it. Just two guards that were being held captive. They're not actually fiends at all. They just don't feel like leaving very much. In the room where they're singing to worship Magus. Come, join us in singing your funeral dirge. Yeah, ha, ha. Staying long enough and talking to them after they're done singing will actually result in a fight. I didn't know this. I thought they were just regular NPCs. Not like it makes any difference because you can't charm items off of them and you fight these enemies all the time anyway, but still a new detail. I got... <sighs> forgot about that one. I just can never seem to get it quite perfect. Any last words? Fine, go ahead. Execute me. I have 999 HP and Star Star Defense. This blade will just plink right off. Okay, on that mountain, there is a really slanted-looking face with a creepy smile on it. Now you can never unsee it. It never gets old, it never gets old, it never gets old. One ending depicts a future very similar to this one, even with Lavo Slain. In it, Robo's in a location you cannot possibly go to at any point in the game, a futuristic lean square. You only ever actually see half of it on screen, so it's not obvious what it is, so here's the full picture. Oh, hey, I know that guy. I met him at the fair. Originally, the jet bike race was going to be given its own section in the credits instead of them just being lumped in with the map designers. In plain text, hackers have found these credits in the game. Thank you for five <laughs> graphic designers. I agree. Five graphic designers working together to make this entire mode it was impressive. Not as interesting, but there's a similar message that's been found in the Japanese version, also meant to be in the credits. R X X R. The high scores have reset once New Game Plus begins, and that means there is another strength capsule to be obtained. The only prerequisite is to hate yourself. 
Robo, you're such a good boy, and I'm happy to have you back in the party. I don't know why I suddenly turned into a Midwestern mom who smokes, but, um, uh... He's got 999 HP and isn't going to be taking any real damage for a long time, so it's the crisis arm for him. 1260 on a regular attack. No critical, even. Oh, I've been waiting for you. Oh, the Tooth Fairy's going to make you so rich at night. Luca, you've earned this to a flare. <laughs> Melt them to the metal on the ground until they are indistinguishable from the floor! <laughs> uh, at this rate, Chrono's just gonna counterattack them into oblivion before Luki even gets to melt them. Okay, fine. So, um, we'll dice up four of them. Uh, we'll melt these four, and when we melt them, we'll be sure to insert pieces of their friends that were diced up into the melted forms of their new bodies. That sounds like an appropriate punishment for hurting my good boy. My friend old man says not to be in such a rush on our first visit to the end of time. He won't let us leave until we look in the door behind him. Ah, he wanted to jump scare us. What are you looking at? Me? I'm Specchio, the master of war. I watch all kinds of battles from here. How do I look to you? Weak! I kicked that thing's ass in one hit yesterday! Hmm? Oh! Got it in you, don't you? That must be where the old guy let you through. See, a long time ago, with my people, but you have it. There's four, you punk gal, and there's a thing with the laser, and by the way, and all right, don't lose track now. No cheating, I got my own room over there, the four don't. Whoa! I didn't even know he had this animation! <laughs> he looks so stupid! I love it! I wonder if the others have walking animations too, because you never see Maza and Mune just out walking around. They're just floating in the air and flexing all strong leg and everything. And okay, that should be enough. Hold on, ipso facto manifesto trail. All right. <laughs> okay, we're doing this fight. So what I want to do first is a barrier sphere on Robo. I also have equipped plates to everyone so that we'll get healed from just about every attack. Uh, we'll do a Barrier Sphere on Chrono. Marl already has that effect by default thanks to her equipment, and we're gonna do haste on all three of us. I've been kind of shirking on the haste lately, and I haven't really meant to. It's just that, you know, you're not always thinking straight whenever a fight is going really fast. I didn't do it on Phase 1 of Lavos, but I did on Phase 2, to the point where we were all in haste where I used it on Chrono and Luca. Uh, Robo's also finally getting a chance to do something now. <laughs> I felt kind of bad that he never got to fight, uh... He didn't fight Queen Zeal or anything in Lavos after phase one, so I'm kind of happy to give that to him. I got my Luminaire. I probably should have actually equipped a Golden Stud to make this less bad, but it's fine. All glowing green. Everything's looking so good for us because we got the haste on. This form of Specchio, I chose not to fight for a while because he actually keeps this form for a good, good long while, and I didn't see it as all that worth it. Uh, to do right away just because he would be staying in it for so long that we might as well wait a while and make things easy. Could an Ice Sword 2 be a good use of MP between the two of them? Uh, Robo, you could probably do a Cure Beam. We're not taking hardly any damage from him at all. It's fine, honestly. Like I said, not that tough. He just uses really strong magic like he did before, and there's not a lot much more to him. We'll do, uh, we'll do an Ice Sword too. Probably should have done Robo's turn first there, but it's fine. Maybe an Ice Tackle would also be a good use of it, or Mega. Yeah, let's not be boring. I want to use all sorts of stuff. It kind of sucks that we have defensive magic as our main thing. He looks so cool doing that. <laughs> I don't know, he manages to look simultaneously really cool, but also really stupid, and I don't know what to think of that. Uh, Mega Volt, there it is. Oh, wait. Oh. Well, crap, that's instant death. Maybe I should have used Lifeline. Marl, use Arise. Robo can electrocute on his turn because we're just gonna have to wait for his turn to come around again anyway if we lay down Lifeline. 
kind of cool that Lifeline's getting a chance to be used legitimately and not just for, hey guys, here's what it looks like. Guess what? Are you ever going to use it? No. <laughs> Seems like it's been the case for so many healing techs because after Slurp Kiss, what else do you really need? Well, Slurp Kiss and Arise, but you know what I mean. That one's a fire. Which heals up Chrono and counter -techs. Yeah, I really should have had the Golden Stud on, but it's fine. Lifeline! I want to use my phone a friend. Hey, I can phone anyone I want, so I phoned God himself, and he sent me three angels that'll resurrect us if we die. Sounds perfect to me. Chrono needs to have haste on him again, actually. I didn't uh, realize that had worn off. Dying does uh, kill off the haste. Uh, Megavolt, and then Marl, you use haste. There. Robo getting healed. Counterattack doing nothing, because he's got perfect evasion. Chrono is standing on top of the door arc. <laughs> Gaspar is probably just looking very unamused at him from the other side, being like, oh, to be young again. It's time to stop. Back clock. Uh, probably, yeah, I'll do Ice Sword too. And then Robo can just spend the turn healing. How much does Cure Beam heal for? His magic stat's not that high, and it is based on that, but it has gotten a lot higher than it was. Well, I guess we'll never know. Oh me, oh boy, it was embarrassing because you wanted to have the Specchio Greg too, and he said, the magic capsule, speed capsule, will strength capsule, ten elixirs. What can I say, Mr. War? You made a new friend, bring him here. He's here, I don't like you guys. <laughs> and now he's just doing his cardio because he desperately needs to get in shape with a belly like that. What's that big clunky thing? Sorry, buddy, but you, you aren't alive. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Well, that was pretty good. Speed Capsule desperately needs to go on Marl because she is our slowest one. Maybe Luke is slower with that Taban's vest, but she always has Taban's vest on, whereas Marl does not always need to have speed equipment on her. Our magic stats are nowhere near maxed out. Now, when in doubt, just use it on who makes sense, too. She's not in any sort of danger of hitting Star Star on that. Uh, strength, on the other hand, doesn't make any sense to give to you guys, so maybe Luca? Even when we get all the party members back, I'm confident that the strength capsules are just going to not be well used on pretty much anyone else. And she's got the Wonder Shot, which is half affected by that, half affected by her accuracy. It makes sense to do. Well, we went through a lot. This is 13 times faster than it was in the main series, and we got to see some bonus content. The End of Time is also the site of the first new content in the DS version that I said I'd be saving for later, and it's going to be saved for even later than right now. Not only because it's the end of the video, but also because we can't do everything there until we visited Antiquity once, so it's going to be saved for just a little longer. Next time on Chrono Trigger, we make it further through New Game Plus. See you guys then.